Welcome. In this revision session, we're going to look at the A-level music technology component four, producing and analyzing. So this is the first um, revision session for component four. Um, we're just going to look at the paper. We're just going to look at how it's structured, what you're going to expect, and just techniques for um, going through it and pacing yourself and making sure you're okay. We're not going to go massively into detail on the question types or how to answer the questions. We're going to leave that for the next videos. Now, if you are enjoying what we've been doing here um, with all these revision sessions here on YouTube, um, give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel show us your support um, the more support we get the more chances are we're going to produce loads 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 more of these things um, and so far it's been a success it's been really nice to see so many people interacting with the revision sessions um, also if you want extra top up you can go to musictechstudent.co.uk and get loads and loads of extra resources with absolutely tons of stuff on there. So anyway, without further ado, let's move on and have a look at the question four, um, or sorry, the component for producing and analyzing exam. So here it is, let me just switch over very quickly. Here's the actual paper. Now the first thing I say to my students is just make sure you set up properly and make sure you're happy um, and you're comfortable. At this particular moment, if something goes wrong, the students tend to freak out massively and it can really hinder the whole exam. So normally what happens, because this is a completely practical exam, you are going in, yes, you do have to answer questions on on production, but more you're more to do with actually producing under controlled conditions. So you're going to be using all of those skills that you've learned during component two, component one. Um, and you're going to be putting it into this exam. You're going to be importing files. You're going to be exporting files. You're going to be bouncing down. Um, so what I tend to do is get my students into the exam room the day before, and I let them set up their 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 PCs or their Mac exactly the way they want them. So make sure they've got the the headphones that they're going to use. Make sure the headphones work. Make sure that the CD drive works, so that they can actually import tracks now this is very important is get them off of a cd or even off of a memory stick to actually import a track to a certain file set up the file the day before and if you do this you're not going to have panic students on the day of the exam because in the past this has really thrown some of my students out there the headphone works and you're chasing around trying to get new headphones or the pc all of a sudden breaks or the the cd player doesn't work and you you haven't quite picked that up so they have to move to a different machine um, and this exam is all about the student being comfortable so it's a two hour and 15 minute exam you do have 10 minutes of setup time um, and this is once again just to get you comfortable make sure you've got the the folder all set up for your exported files to, to go into now in my exam center the exam people they they give all the center number and the candidate name on the actual table so that that won't cause any stumbling blocks but do make sure that the students are fully aware of what the center number is and what the candidate number is I'm um, just so it doesn't there's no hiccups there either so things that you must have then you must have the correct audio files um, and the digital format that they're on you must have working headphones or monitoring speakers now if you're lucky enough to have individual rooms with monitor speakers that is obviously the best way of doing it now in my center there's no way we can do it on monitor speakers we only have one recording studio and the lab, so everyone has to work on headphones, otherwise it'll be absolutely crazy. The headphones are absolutely fine, it's just to make sure that they can hear appropriately out of the left and the right the ears. Make sure the frequency range is good and make sure that um, the stereo field works. Um, make sure they've got a computer system that has Logic installed or Cubase or whatever DAW you're using. And just once again, make sure they know how to download or sorry, upload the files into the correct folder and make sure they know how to export them into the correct format. So during the setup time, you're going to have to set up your DAW, so logic, um, with the following settings. So in this particular instance, they want you to set it up as a 16 bit 44.1. Um, and that's fairly standard. So just make sure that goes in. Um, you're going to then save the project called comp4 and then your candidate number um, in the folder that you've created. So 
more often than not the folder goes onto the the desktop or goes into the, the student's area they are not allowed access to any um, internet or anything like that so please when they're working from them tell them to open nothing else but um, logic or, or whatever they're working from um, they can get heavily penalized if they start browsing around the internet and then it set up the metronome for the project and then finally it says import the first track and just make sure that it works and make sure you understand that it has to go in a very specific position and as you go through each of these questions they are going to ask you to put the tracks in a very specific position so this one here is at the beginning of bar one um, and that's pretty much it for that one there and then it does obviously tell you not to open the paper until the instructor or the invigilator says so. Then you're going to need your your um, regular things for an exam. So you will need a black ink or ballpoint pen. You will need to fill in all the boxes um, at the top of this page and make sure you, everything's filled in up there. Um, and then once again, just answer all the questions. I think that's pretty much it. Now, when you finish this exam, you do have to save all the audio files. So you're going to have these audio files here. So you, it says questions one, two, sorry, one, three, four, and five in this particular exam require you to export audio within the two hours and 15 minutes. Now, you won't have to put the audio onto the CD or the the file format that's required but you do have to bounce down after the 2 hours and 15 minutes you will not be allowed to bounce down any audio so as you go through the questions definitely bounce it down as you go there is plenty of time to do that do not leave it till the end because if you forget you'll mess up and one year we did have a couple of students that that didn't do it until after the point and that particular year they, they were lucky and the invigilator was, was okay with that but to be fair that's not really right um, and don't ask the invigilator to put himself in that position because obviously that that could jeopardize the whole the whole center so bounce down questions one three four and five within the two hours and 15 minute time that's really really important putting those files onto cd that can be done afterwards that's not a problem um and that's pretty much it. And it does say here you're not allowed a calculator. So when you're working out your binary um, calculations, you're not actually allowed a calculator for that. But do remember that you are allowed to use every single function within your DAW. And a lot of students don't take this into consideration, is the actual fact you've got logic open and you can find a lot of the answers if you go to the event window. Um, you won't find the binary in there, but you will find things like the, the MIDI data, the CC data. And from that data, you can then make um, you can calculate the binary from that um, or whatever calculation you need so so just keep in mind you know if they're asking you for a parameter or if they're asking you for a setting you can go into the reverb or you can go into the delay and you can find those settings it's really really you know it's great so this particular exam is made up of six questions the first five are section a and then the last one is section b so question six is an essay based question it's going to be it's going to be based on um, a mixed scenario or some kind of production scenario. Now, section A is all about the audio files that you've been given. So it will ask you to import the files. It will ask you to export the files. It will also ask you to do things with it. So here we are. We're in section A. We're on question one. And we're just getting some general knowledge. So the first thing you need to do is look at what the question's saying. So it says question one is all about the drum part. So don't start working on vocals. Don't start working on the bass or anything else. It only wants you to work on the drum parts. So fairly simple uh, multi-choice question here. So you can just find out what the quantized value is. And then from the part that you imported at the very top there, so you should already have your drum part set up at bar one. It then says draw the drum part for bar eight on the piano roll below. So if you want to look at the drum part, if it's, if it's an audio file, that's not going to be so easy. But if it comes through as a MIDI file, which sometimes they do, you should be able to find that data. If not, then you're going to have to listen and try and notate it. And I always start, when, when we get these kind of questions, I always say, right, what's the bass drum doing first? What's the hi-hat pattern doing? And then find out where the snare is. And, snare is. and then you can work out any kind of fills from that. This is quite a common question, um, and it can throw some students, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, and you'll notice that there's four marks for it as well. So the next thing here is you've got to 
keep in mind these boxes here. You At the end of each section, you're gonna get these boxes and it's the export box. This is where they tell you to download something or export it, um, the drum part in this particular instance, as a specific um, web file um, and then give it a specific name. So this is gonna be called question one or Q1 and then your candidate number on it. And it must go into the folder that you set up at the beginning. Um, so there's there's the first question. Um, so straight away, you, you're finding this format of import something and then export something. And that's quite common. Now in question two, there's no exporting. It's all about describing what you're hearing. So the first thing you need to do is import the synthwave. It will tell you exactly where to do it and where, where to put it. Normally it will even tell you to put it on its own lay, on its own channel, and it will tell you the position where it needs to start. So this one starts at bar one. Um, and if you set the project up, that will slot straight in and it will look perfect. Sometimes you have to trim them down. So depending on the mixed task that they ask you to do, you will have to trim them down. So then you get some various questions about the production techniques used or, or what you're actually hearing. Look at how many marks they're giving you. So if it's a two mark question, don't go overboard. They're just looking very specifically for two points. Now, at the end of question two, there are no there are no exports, but they are looking very, very much at you identifying what's happening in those particular exports. So we've got a filter question here. Um, we've got a labeling the filter. So understand what the axes are and draw out the, the frequencies that you're you're hearing. Once again, for these particular tasks, um, depending on the DAW you're using, you can actually play through it and then freeze freeze the, the parameter or freeze the EQ graph so you can actually see what's happening and, and draw out that particular um, that particular graph and see actually how it kind of the labels work. So that's great. Remember remember this all the way through is you're not on your own with this task with this task. You do have your DAW and most of the information that they're asking for you can get from the DAW which is great. So moving forward then we're now into question three. Um, this time we're going to import a MIDI file and it's called the chords. So for this particular task it's all about the chords and for the one above it was all about the synth obviously. It's asking you to import it, it's asking you to put it at a very specific position. In this point it's bar 10 and then you have to go about doing some particular tasks. So it'll ask you to match the timbre or it'll ask you to make some make the extra notes and actually make sure that you get the same timbre that you're using that you're using a very specific synth so in this particular instance they give you a WAV file as well you're not allowed to use the WAV file in your final mix you have to match that timbre and then you've got two options you mute this particular channel or you delete it fully um, personally I would get the students to delete it delete it fully so that if the examiner comes back and they want to see this um, it's not a problem it'll be there and that brings me to another one make sure the the file that you work on your DAW file that you're working on make sure you save that to the folder as well because if the if the exam board wants to see that you haven't cheated in any way um, they're, they're going to want to see that so you know make sure you you save that to the file as well working through and then we have this kind of calculation one now with the velocities you will get this from the event window so you can find out what this particular velocity is for this particular note um, remember you're, you're looking at the MIDI file that we're working from and then from that you have to make your calculation so for instance if this one is 98 and it has this binary code if this next one is 99 the binary code will just go up by one number um, so you, it, it becomes a little bit easier to work out the binary as long as you know what you're doing with this it becomes a little bit easier to work out the binary once you've found the, the velocity markings or the, the actual um, CC data from the event window. And once again, at the end of this question, you do have an export. And this one is question three. Put your candidate number on it. So moving through, keep going, keep going, keep going. Question four, same again, import the vocals, answer a bunch of questions on those particular vocals, and we will come back to this. Um, this video is already getting quite long, so I'm going to just skip through a little bit more now. Um, once you get to the end of all of these questions, there's normally, and this one's a long question, look. Once again, you have the export 
you have to export it down. So you have a mixture of things to do on this one. Sometimes you have to answer questions about what you're hearing. Sometimes you have to produce for it. And that's what the export. And the other thing is, is when you're doing your export, it's only asking you to export that particular part. So although you've just done your drums and you've done your synth and you've done whatever and your vocal, um, it's, it's only asking you for the vocal part. So when you export this, make sure you mute the other parts and just export that on its own. I would always, after you finish exporting it, I would always check it as well. So just open the file in your media player and just check it to make sure none of the other parts come through. Because if the other parts come through you won't get the marks you want and they want to see that you've produced it in exactly the way that they've asked you for okay and then on to question five so question five is the one where you have to commercially mix this particular track so you get a list of a list of uh, points and you have to mix it to those points so you've, you've now put all of the tracks in place you've got all those bits in you've got this sequence normally you know between 20 and 30 seconds sequence and now you have to produce it so each question will ask you a different thing to do so section a you need to look at the um, the compression for the lead vocal and make sure you do exactly the way they want it at the end of this particular process when you export question five they are looking for it to be mixed in a certain way and when they look at their graphs they'll be looking to make sure the mix levels are a certain height to make sure the frequency spectrum is covered um, and things like that and you know so follow the instructions for this particular question and give that full mix um, but it is it's fairly self-explanatory everything that's expected of you is written so don't worry so all of that has to be done in the 2 hour 15 and then make sure you bounce it down so this one's question 5 and can look. when you put it onto the CD after the exam is finished um, make sure they go into the right order at the moment it's still CDs I've got a feeling in the future it might go off as, a, as another digital format we're not quite sure yet but it does look at the moment that it's going to be CDs and for some centers including my own this is causing massive problems we have to buy external CDs at the moment because our Mac our, our iMacs don't have a CD a CD um, player anymore which yeah it causes it causes a few issues there actually so there's the producing side of it so questions one through to five is all about the producing of tracks um, and I really like this exam I think it's a, a great way for you guys to demonstrate what you actually know um, and I should also say that that one is worth 85 marks in total sometimes the questions will be worth more sometimes questions will be worth less um, but throughout those questions one to five it will be worth 85 marks and that is section A so finally just on to section B and you just have one question and it's worth 20 marks so it's quite a big one and one thing I do say to my students with any essay based question is come to this one first read the question get some rough paper make some notes and then come back to it again later on um, so just spend maybe two or three minutes reading the question making a few notes if necessary and then come back to it so when you get to this point and you're running out of time now most students with this particular exam do start to run out of time um, that you can actually jot down the points you need to do and we'll look at how to cover this particular exam um, in a second or this particular question in or in another video um, but it is an essay based question um, and it's worth 20 marks so that's the whole paper I would encourage you guys to come over to the paper um, look at it try to answer some of this and this is a sample specification which can be found on the Excel at Excel website um, and you can also at the very end of it you've also got the mark scheme as well so you can look at the marks that they were expecting so just to finish off if you've enjoyed this particular um, revision session and you've got a lot out of it make sure you subscribe we're going to do loads more tomorrow we're going to look at question one for this exam paper so join us tomorrow um, and happy revising